Well, there is certainly a chill in the air these days, and on Sunday, you're more than likely going to be hanging out on the couch watching the game than heading out on the links. But if you got to get one more round in this year, you're going to want to see this. Please keep the noise down at the Penn State Acoustics Research Lab. I'm Dan Russell, and I'm on a quest to find the perfect sounding golf club. For the last 15 years, I've been studying the acoustics and vibration of sports equipment. I've been looking at baseball bats, softball bats, tennis rackets, golf clubs, hockey sticks, cricket bats, ping pong paddles, anything that you hold in your hands to play sports with. I've been looking at the sounds they make and to get a sense of how the acoustics and the sound is related to the performance of these implements. And about a year and a half ago, we found out about a golf club that was one of the highest performing uh, golf clubs on the market in terms of the way it hit the balls, but it sounded terrible. Players were putting uh, reviews online saying that this particular club sounded like hitting a cookie tray on the top of a car or hitting an aluminum baseball bat on a, on a telephone pole. Uh, so we wanted to find out what it was about this particular golf club that made it make such an annoying sound. But one of the things that the players know is hitting the ball in the center of the face, it hits, it produces a sound that players like. Hitting the ball off center or above and below, it, they can tell whether it's been a good hit or a bad hit by the way it sounds. We want to know how the entire club is radiating sound. So we were measuring the vibration, not only the face, but also the crown and the sole, the entire body of the club, to find out what is this club doing that makes it radiate sound the way it does, and makes it produce the sound, so when the ball hits it, why is it screaming the way that it, it produces the sound? At the 3D Golf Simulation Lab, they use the same technology Hollywood uses to create CGI characters like Gollum or King Kong to measure golfer's technique. We've got the markers on the golfer here and even on, on the golf club. Every marker on the golfer is seen, hopefully by at least three cameras at a time. As Matt makes a swing, you'll see that his back is gonna turn, uh, his torso turns, his pelvis, and as he moves through, it's a very dynamic movement, so we need cameras around the room to see the movement of all the markers. This is a skeleton representative, uh, representative look, but it really is this golfer's movements to within a degree uh, and within a millimeter. So what we can do is visually look at this swing from any angle. So it's like having an infinite number of cameras. For instruction purposes, it can be extremely valuable. But Dan's not interested in improving his swing. He wants to improve his clubs. The four cameras work together to take two images of the golf ball, as well as two images of the club head moving through impact. We've markered up the club face here as well uh, so that it knows the impact location for the golf ball. Right now, this microphone located close to the ball will allow us to measure the sound that the ball is hitting and, and get a chance to see how it differs for impact location, toe, heel, center, up or down, and we can compare that to what I've been able to measure for the club vibrations and the ball vibrations. Back in the acoustics lab, it's time to see how the club head vibrates on impact. So in order to measure the vibrational properties of, of a club or a racket or a bat or whatever it is I'm testing, I've got a real small accelerometer, a little tiny uh, device that measures vibration. I will attach that with a little bit of wax Plug that into my analyzer. I've got a really small force hammer, uh, really, <laughs> really, really small, like a little pencil tip that I'm going to use to tap the club, and I'll plug that in. But I put the dots on here to help me determine where I'm going to hit the club. So I'm going to, I'm going to hit the club with a tiny hammer, and at each one of these points, I'm going to tap it while I'm measuring the vibration response at some other location. The accelerometer I'm gonna keep fixed in the same place. The hammer I'm gonna move around and tap it at each of these little points, and I can measure the force in and the vibration out at a pair of points. And if I do that for the entire club face, I'll find out how every point on the club vibrates compared to every other point on the club. And then that data will give me an idea of what the entire club as a whole is doing as it vibrates and oscillates back and forth. This particular machine I've got is called a frequency analyzer. It looks really old school. It's probably about 20 years old. Um, it has a floppy disk drive. Most kids probably don't even know what a floppy disk is anymore. Um, but it, it measures the data that I want with great accuracy and allows me complete control over what I'm doing in ways that I can't always get with the software package. The camera and vibration data are combined in more modern software. That creates a video showing how each part of the structure vibrates compared with the other part. 
So in this, I'm, I'm showing the same club that we just got done testing, and I can see the, the front face, the face where I hit the ball, is vibrating. We call this the trampoline mode. In this case, this one time back and forth is happening about 4,500 times a second. If you hit the ball on the club dead center, this particular pattern gets excited very, very well. But if I hit the ball on the club off center towards the heel or the toe, this pattern shows up a lot. And so the resulting sound will be different because I'm exciting a different type of vibration in the club face. One of the things that the acoustics of a golf club could help manufacturers do in the future is to make some kind of an adjustable driver that you could change the sound. So that if a player likes a driver because of its performance, but doesn't like the way it sound, I could adjust something, turn something, move something to change the sound, make it sound different, but keeping its performance the same. So unfortunately, I, don't, I can't play golf, and it doesn't matter how much I know about the acoustics and the vibration of the golf club, it's probably not going to make me a much better player.